more donor harvesting when it comes to FUT or strip uh, techniques, uh, but at the same time, you know, you, there's, it's, I have an FUT, FUE talk coming up if we have enough time to go through all this. So I just, I, I like to give them some oral sedation to start, uh, and then I give them IV sedation. You, obviously, you don't need that, and that's really only going to be if, if you're having a credit facility to do that. Then I give them a little bit of more pain relief for the afternoon and make, make them feel more comfortable. This is, people have always, the students I, I've taught have always asked me, tell me, how do you do it during the day? What are your sequence? So I get my PR, and we have a, hopefully have a lecture if time permits on PRP, PRP drawn by the RN, I do the hairline, then the donor is selected, uh, the PRP is prepared by the MA, uh, the donor is prepared by the MA in terms of shaving and getting it prepped and taped, sedation is set by the RN, uh, I start doing the donor harvesting around 7.45, I'm done with the donor uh, closure, and this, the strip is ready out in the hands of, the, of, my, of my techs, and I start making sites around 9.30, uh, they're starting the graft preparation, and I'm done around uh, 11.30, usually about two hours. So the safe donor area is very important to understand this, and that area uh, is, a, is an ongoing battle because we constantly lose hair, uh, and we start to continue to have zones that become unsafe. So this area way down here is considered more of a, of a safe area, and you want to be careful with uh, the... Okay, well, that's fine. We'll continue. So this, this here is plan, how do you plan how many graphs you play? So this is just a, a case scenario, for example. Let's say this is the area you want to plan. If you just subtract this zone of 30 some square centimeters and you go down to the smaller size, you, you'll have different number of graph burdens. You can actually see it shaves off 750 graphs here by going from 100 square centimeters down to 70. How do you make this calculation? Well, let's say on average we want to make about 25 uh, sites per square centimeter over 100 square centimeters. This is our rough demand of what we're, we're asking to, to fill. And then here, let's say the donor strip, we go and look at it with our uh, densitometer and evaluate how much hair there is. Let's say it's growing 80 follicular units per square centimeter. Well, let's say we, have, we harvest about a, a centimeter strip at 80 follicular square centimeters for a harvest length of 25. You do the math, we're going to get about 2,000 follicular units, units estimated. Uh, now, if you, the other thing you can do is, I want to get a really accurate count, so what we'll do is we'll look at this and we usually take a two centimeter segment out. Now, if one is more sparser and, and one is denser, well, you're not going to get a good average. So we take each of those two, uh, two centimeter segments and then we do some math from this. So let's say we have that four centimeters total that's been taken out. We dissect that and, and we get a, a, a number that we can project with. So 54 one hair graphs, let's say we pulled out Two hair grafts pull 220, three hair 62, that gives us 337 follicular units or 84 follicular units per square centimeter. Uh, and then we take that number, which is from four centimeters, and we multiply by six, or by uh, six because 2040 divided by four is six. That will give us how many we think we'll get for the whole, whole strip. Um, all this is in the book. And that way, I can start designing, so that way I'll know, based on a two centimeter or four centimeter segment, this is how many graphs that we're going to be able to get to do this. Now, as I design it, they're going to start getting their numbers closer and closer to accurate, and they're going to say, well, wait a second, we have 200 fewer graphs of twos, more threes, and I'm going to adjust my design as needed as I go forward with that. Uh, this is just prepping and shaving the area. Uh, we, I use a lidocaine block, just 1% to 100,000. Uh, uh, bicarbonate around to block all the nerves. Uh, this is just showing that in the back. 10 cc's in the front, 10, cc the, 10 cc's in the back. Tumescence is so very important when you're doing this. Uh, not so much for FUE, but for FUT or strip. And the reason for this is that, well, for FUE, it can cause more of a bogginess in some, some, some cases. But if you run a ship at low tide, this is the analogy, you're going to scrape, you're going to scrape the corals. But if you run at a high tide, the corals are not, are not uh, damaged. What this means is your blade is not going to injure the hairs and nerve and blood supply. It's going to coast across there. So tumescence is so important. In the past, I would just use a standard 10cc. I got this device from Coal Instruments out of uh, Alfreda, Georgia. And it's really easy because it, you just keep on pumping from a bag. It, it pulls it from a bag. So I really like this. probably minimizes needle sticks uh, and, and expedites the process. I'm looking until that is very blanched, tight, flat, and that really helps tremendously. And the, the tumescence uh, fluid is basically like a quarter percent, 
uh, lidocaine with like one to 400,000 epi. Um, and it gives me a good hemostasis. So different ways to do donor harvest. You can do a single blade technique. You can, do a, uh, don't, you can do a double blade with a single scoring, meaning this is a, a, a multi-blade instrument, but I have this one set to score the, the dermis, and then I'll come back and finish it with a blade. Why do that? Because this sets the exact width. It's much, you get the exact width, and your calculations are better than just using a single blade. Uh, you can, and this is just showing you this set to scoring here, and the, this one set to, to cut. Uh, this is a, a double blade double scoring, and this is actually what I use in 90 some percent of cases. I'll just, I'll just set it to score, score both of them, then come back and harvest each one so I actually keep exactly the right width um, because even with this little pen marking, you're going to be slightly off on, on your width, and I like to have accurate counts as I predict it. Double blade is going to be taking uh, a multi blade with two blades going the same time. Uh, I don't do this because there's a higher rate of transection, especially when you start to go over one centimeter in width. That when you go to 1.2, the angles of hair here and here are different, so you want to be careful with that. Uh, this is just showing a double blade setup, and this is just uh, har showing you some harvesting there uh, with a double with a uh, double. I think this is I don't know if that's a video, but we need to continue. Okay, so I'm going very slowly too to harvest. This is a, a process where I'm constantly looking for transection and making some small adjustments. In the next uh, slide, I think you're going to see what I mean by adjustments. But you don't want to rush this. A lot of people just whoosh, fly through it. And you want to slowly look at the depth, the angle, make adjustments, wipe for any uh, little bleeding. And you should have very minimal bleeding and minimal transection. If you transect a lot, your craft count will be totally off and you'll be, you get bad scarring in the back and you're going to have a much harder time for your assistant staff. So when you look at this little diagram, what, you're, what I'm looking for is I elevate the flap. If I'm seeing the hair bulbs principally transected here, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the blade over here. So this is uh, more bulbs transected you can see here. So I'm going to raise it. If I see more of the upper shafts, I'm going to lower this. And so that will correct it so that I get minimal transection. So if anything you, you remember from this donor harvest, if you do harvesting besides tumescence, is slow, steady, and look for transection. Make micro adjustments so you don't transect. Because again, that's going to minimize scarring in the back. Because the reason for bad donor scarring, besides taking too much out, is poor harvesting. It's not, it's not a, a, cause, because you're a really good surgeon, you closed it well. Anyone can close the wound. It's harvesting that leads to good, good wounds. Uh, minimize transection. You can see this is a typical wound with very little bleeding and very clean uh, sight. So that this, this is the way it should look. You don't want to go so deep you're touching the galea. It's just past the bottom hair bulb. Sometimes the shafts are longer, sometimes they're shorter. And this is a close-up. You can see should be minimal transection. It should be a very clean and bloodless plane. I maybe once a year take out my cautery device and just hit one little area. You shouldn't be boving this area because you're going to create a lot of problems. So keep a clean field. Then I come back, just finish my, my corners looking for transection. Uh, I remove a two centimeter segment, as I told you, so that my staff can begin the process of giving a, gra a graph count for me, because by the time I'm closed with a wound, they give a projected graph count for me. And I can start working with that to design my recipient sites. Finish, finishing up the strip, I segment into different, uh, different smaller pieces so they can take it. Then I take it out with the uh, Metzenbaum scissors. I do a trichophytic closure if there's not too much tension. Uh, this is just showing you it's a bottom ledge, and so that when you deepithelialize the bottom edge, the hairs grow through. But it's not the trichophytic closure that leads to good, good wounds. It is the good harvest. And that's a, a very, very important tenet of this talk. Remove some debris so you don't have foreign bodies in there. Spray it down, clean it. I use platelet poor plasma, uh, be, and I, you're going to hear it in my PRP talk, because the, the, the platelet poor plasma is just excessive. I, don't, I have a lot of it, but the, the activity level is almost like 80 some percent. So I spray some in, I'll inject it after it's closed. Uh, then I put t uh, tension clamps on there to help align and decrease tumescent fluid. If anything is too much tension, just wait. This is great. I use hyaluronidase. It, if, only if there's too much tension, it actually really reduces tension a lot. So if you're stuck, I'll, I'll take a whole bottle of this, mix it in five cc's, inject it into the wound bed on above and below about a centimeter, and it actually diminishes wound tension very quickly over about 10 minutes. Now, this is not something you want to do. You always want to feel like, God, I could have taken half a centimeter more. You want to go so that you have 
plenty of free tension at the end. You don't want to get stuck with, oh my god, I need high rendezvous. But if you're in an exit strategy, this can help you with uh, tight wound closures. I use a little aeronaut and distal to the wound so that it can, it can sort of be alleviated of pressure and that you can't, uh, you don't feel the knot on the wound for the patient. And then I just, a little trick here to let that trichophytic closure go down well is I go 45 degrees across the wound. That way the superficial pulls down vertically this direction and you get a better overlay of that trichophytic wound edge uh, if you're doing that. Then I put additional PPP at the end. Uh, then I put a marcane block. And what I've noticed is that I actually put more marcane block of a total of 20 cc's all in the back so that they really feel numb. I go up and down this and the patient has minimal discomfort afterwards. A little trick there. Uh, this is a video, but we're going to skip it for the sake of time. Okay, let's uh, go to the next talk. Nick.